Out of your belly, 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 out of Welcome to the Men of Integrity, men that rescue men and women. As always, we are excited that you've joined us for a journey through the Word of God. God has been wonderful. He's been marvelous. He's been magnificent. There is no God like the God we serve, and His name is Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Savior of the universe, the Redeemer of mankind, the healer of our mind, body, soul, and spirit. And what I love about Him most he is a present help in the time of trouble. So call a neighbor, call a friend, and tell them that the men of integrity is on the air, and there is a word concerning you tonight and your situation. Pastor J. Edward Fisher, our co-host, Pastor St. Senator Coppers Cove and Colleen. Well, yeah, you know, I'm just thinking about Jehoshaphat when he was in trouble, Bishop, mm -hmm. and the nations were going to try to annihilate the Jewish people. But he called a fast, and uh, he came into the house of the Lord. That's the when you got trouble. That's where you need to go, to the house of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> David said it best. I was glad when they said unto me, "That's right. Let us go into the house of the Lord. In yeah. the house of the Lord, you will find liberty mm -hmm. and rest for your soul, mm -hmm. and you will find answers for your problems too." <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I think that brings the the peace and the mm -hmm. rest Amen. when God speaks to your heart. Jeremiah 33 and 3. Mm -hmm. I love that particular text, and it says, if you call upon oh, me, man. I will answer you, and I will show you things that you did not know. God knows it all. He knows it all. Praise the name of the Lord. He knows it all, and he knows us all, too. <laughs> <laughs> so very true. You know, I want to take this opportunity and, and declare to you that, you know, people are returning back to the house of worship. Mm -hmm. uh, God is opening doors. The numbers are going down, and amen. And it's just all kind of wonderful things that are happening. So I want to take this opportunity to invite you to our services. Yes. Okay? I'll tell you about ours first, and Apostle Fisher will tell you how to reach him, and then we'll get into the Word of God. You can reach us at the Rivers of Living Waters Ministry, 508 North Gray Street, downtown Colleen, right across the street from the First National Bank. Our number is 254-690-9673. Transportation is available. We have Children Church available on Sunday morning at 1030, Wednesday night at 7. You can join us in prayer on Wednesday night at 6.30, and you can join us for our discipleship training on Sunday at 9 a.m. I promise you it'll be worth your time, for every service is a life-changing experience. Yeah, and uh, Saint Center, you know, uh, we're in two locations, uh, Copper's Cove, 801 Industrial Avenue. Um, our service time there is uh, Wednesday, 7 o'clock Bible study in search of the truth. Uh, Friday night, we're continuing on uh, what, what we started in Wednesday, and then Sunday at 11.30, uh, we'll have our um, Sunday worship service. But if you're not in Coppers Cove, but you're in Colleen, uh, then we have a Colleen service, Thursday night Bible study, again, in search of the truth. Uh, Sunday um, at 10.30, uh, we'll be um, breaking open the Word of God and praising and magnifying the Lord. So you can come any time, praise the name, and I guarantee you that uh, you will feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. That, that is so great and wonderful. Amen. Apostle Fisher is a very true man of God. And I tell you, if you want to be made whole, you need to go and see <laughs> Apostle J. Edward Fisher at any one of those locations at St. Center. You will be loved. You will be treated with wonderful respect. Mm -hmm. Amen. As he dissimulate to you, the Word of God. Can't go wrong. Mm. We love you now. Pick up that Bible, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. One writer said could not perish, mm. but have 
everlasting life. Apostle Fisher, I want to focus tonight on this thought for our audience. To stop, refocus, and finish strong. All right. We've been through a lot of catastrophic events over the last few months, even the last few years that has caused us to lose focus and sometimes even lose sight on the promise. The promise that God said that I will never leave you, forsake you, nor fail you. I will be your witness tonight mm -hmm. that you can get trapped in the confinements of your own mind, dealing with the complexity of your own problems and lose focus on John 3, 16. Mm -hmm. And that's when somebody has to snap us out. Somebody mm -hmm. has to deliver a word that calls us to reassess and to refocus on the Word of God. Yeah, you know, God has not changed, but sometimes we get complacent and we go on and we take a little um, things for granted and everything, but God is still standing there saying, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and you shall find rest for your soul. So if you're restless and um, you are um, I'm not doing the thing that you used to do. You don't feel like you used to feel. I'll tell you why. Because you're not doing the thing that you used to do with God. You just got to go back and, and, re and, and rebuild those bridges. Why is this here that uh, God has brought you across? Hey Amen. You know, the record suggests to us in Romans 14 and 5, mm -hmm. it says, let every man be persuaded in his own mind. You know, for years before we really got to know each other, I listened to you on the radio uh, here in the Colleen area. And it would always just stand out to me. It would always just rattle my mind when I would hear you in that high pitch voice and declaring to the people, will you be made whole? And, and, and it was something that was so intriguing and inviting and it was almost questioning you, why won't you be made whole? <laughs> I want you to take a minute and just tell me, why was that so important to you to declare that statement from God? Well, uh, you know, I think that um, one of the things that the Lord had dealt with me earlier about, and I saw in the Bible, Bishop, I saw that um, God was a, a supernatural God and that we could have the impossible. And I was kind of into um, healing, you know, I believed in the healing thing of God. You know, Jesus went about doing good and healing all those that were oppressed of the devil. So I thought that this is the way we're supposed to do because after all, we, we, we taken on his ministry while he's in heaven, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, God led me to that scripture and that was the th uh, question that I asked the people every time we started. Will thou be made whole, not just healed, but whole, whole. And um, uh, well, I, a lot of people do want to be made whole. People got problems and everything like that. And so that was, and, and I know the question would be yes, but then now it opens the door for me to tell them how to be made whole. I, I, absolutely. Yet coming through this pandemic, mm -hmm and all of the other issues we had before, amen, the pandemic came, mm -hmm. and all of the issues that we have that nobody else knew about. Coming through this, at this season and time of our life, when it appears that things are getting better, is it important now to take a reassessment of who we are, mm -hmm. who God is, and the issues that we're dealing with as we work them out day to day to even consider that statement and that question and what would be the next step? Well, yes, I, I think so because, you know, um, God hasn't changed. This pandemic came uh, into our lives, but it didn't change God. And God knew about it before it even happened. And, 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 and what God wants us to do, things are going to happen. We're not going to live a life where nothing doesn't happen. But God gave us a, com a commodity called faith, Bishop. Mm -hmm. And he said, this is the victory that overcometh the world. And God expects us to use our faith. He's not going to take away everything. 
but with our faith, which he gave us, we can, we can overcome. We can overcome. So, um, um, so that's what we, uh, uh, and this tries our faith too, you know. Um, challenges try our faith. It lets us know where we are. Not where God is at. God is, is where he's always going to be. But it lets us know where we are. And you know, you know, uh, we say things like this. Well, it separates the men from the boys. You, um, um, and, and that's a good thing in a sense. Because uh, you're going to find out how much you love the Lord, how much you're going to obey the Lord, how much you're going to stay with the Lord, how much you can endure, all of those things like that. So in a sense, it's a good thing because the trying of our faith work in patience and patient experience. And, and, and if we have uh, uh, patience and experience and endure, we'll see God in the, in the light that he wants us to see. God is not worried about anything. We're the ones that are worried. And yet he tells us, uh, be careful for what? Nothing. Nothing. And he said, cast all your care up on me. He told us before, he said, in the last days, Perilous times will come. Well, we've been in the last days since 2,000 years, since Jesus came, because he came in the last days. And um, um, uh, so what are we going to do? We're going to, we can triumph. We're supposed to be more than conquerors. We're supposed to be new creatures. We're supposed to be, watch this here, complete in Jesus. But we got to become what we are, Bishop even in the midst of this. And this shows us what we have. It doesn't really show us what God can do. Why well, says it shows us what we, what we believe about God. See? That is, that, is, that is so wonderful and so great. We challenge you tonight to reflect mm -hmm. and to see where you are in your faith That's right. with God. Because without faith, it is absolutely impossible to please God. That's right. The Hebrew writer says, he that cometh to God must first believe that God is, and mm -hmm. he's a reward of them that didn't seek him. Well, here is the example of that found in Romans chapter 4, verses 20 through 21. Abraham staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in the faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to Perform. Mm -hmm. So, Apostle, I want to throw another question at you. We're going to oh, yeah. squeeze the wisdom and knowledge out of the Apostle <laughs> tonight. And so, my brokenness and my pursuit of God, but yet still in my brokenness, how do I develop this level of faith? Because I have not been made whole. I may have just started going to church. I mean, I just picked up my Bible, mm -hmm. or maybe I just started praying. But how do I get to that fullness of what you call wholeness? All right. Well, first of all, you have to align yourself with God's program. God's program starts with Jesus. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? And then from there, uh, um, Jesus opens the door to the things of God. So we must start there. And you read the scriptures, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe it in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Then when we start with Jesus, then watch this here, we must go on, watch this here, since Jesus has gone back to heaven, we must go on to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Because the Holy Ghost is the actually the author of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so we got to be taught, Bishop, we got to grow in grace and the knowledge. So, uh, so we've got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We got to come to church. Church is not man's idea. Church is God's idea. Mm -hmm. If it was man's idea, you, you know how church would go. Mm -hmm. But God is the one that gave the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. What for? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. So you have to come back to church. You have to come into the church and not only just come to the church, but you, a church must be uh, the major part of your life. I know you have jobs and I know you have other interests, but watch this here. But our interests must first be lined up with God and then everything will work out, work itself out. But we must start what first with God uh, and do the things that God has told us to do, obey his commandments, walk in the word of God. And then that's another thing. When we're in the church, watch this here, the word of God is going to come forth and it's going to give us the faith that pleases God. 
You know, some people are trying to serve God without the word of God. You, you can't do that. You can't separate God from his word. God is so much in his word that the scripture says he placed his word above his name. Mm -hmm. Now, the word of God has got to be like that with us. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, uh, if it's that important to God, then it has got to be that important to us. But some of us are trying to serve him without the word, and, and that's, not, that's just not going to work. And then, of course, you know the word produces a lot of things. One thing the word produces is healing and life. Uh, Proverbs 4 and 20 says, Attend unto my word, incline thine ear unto my saying. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart, for they are life yes, unto sir. those that find them, and health, and, and health, and, and uh, health to all their flesh. You see what I'm saying? So God has given his word, but if we're trying to do it without the word, it's just not going to be done. That was good. You, you, you've heard the apostle, and he's really breaking that word down for you. I think that is so important mm -hmm. that we reflect. So I want you to take that first word tonight and reflect. So we're going to talk about reflect, mm -hmm. refocus, and renew your life so you can have a strong finish. So what should I be reflecting on? John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. Mm -hmm. The apostle John was staggered by the magnitude of God's love and its implications. He states, see how great a love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. Mm -hmm. The apostle was so captivated by the truth. God shows his love for us that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. That's right. So when the apostle says that it starts with Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. it starts with the penalty that was we were facing and the price that he paid for our redemption. And the writer says, you were not redeemed with such things as corruptible gold and silver mm -hmm. and all that stuff, Amen. but you were redeemed with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So it's the reflection of God's love for you. Mm -hmm. God's love is not based on your behavior. It's based on what pleased him mm -hmm. before the foundation before of the, the world. Before the foundation of the world. So, Apostle, would it be right uh, to say that God really does love us in spite of to push us to this wholeness. Well, it would be definitely, definitely right. We have nothing to offer God. You understand what I'm saying? And then the decision, uh, uh, what we're living in now, the decision, like you said, was made before the foundation of, before we were even made and thought of, Bishop. Um, God made decisions that those people that will accept my son, here's what they're going to get. Praise the name of the mm -hmm. Lord. We can't work for it. We really don't deserve it, but God in his own, watch this here, in his own self decided, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm going to do for the people that will accept my son. So that's why I say it starts with Jesus first. Watch this here. Uh, it's nothing we could do to, to get saved but to receive Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, we were, we're not good enough. Come on. Our righteousness was a filthy rag. You understand what I'm saying? No flesh will glory in the sight of God. So watch this here. So the only thing I have to do is take on Jesus and take on his merits. He's the one that kept the word. Uh, he's the one that's perfect. I'll never be like that without him. Uh, and so uh, that's why I said we must start with Jesus first. See, right now, I'm not trying to be saved because of how I do. Watch this here. Uh, Jesus saved me. No, nothing I couldn't do. But because I'm saved, yes, watch this here. I want to please him. And because I'm saved, watch this here. I'm a new creature. Well, I, I, I should be able to act like I'm, I'm supposed to act, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there's nothing I can do. I mean, I don't have enough money to pay God. You understand what I'm saying? I don't have nothing that God really needs, praise the name, but he has everything that we need. But it comes through Jesus Christ. Christ. No, well, remember, Jesus made a bold statement. Yes. Now, you got to think about that mm -hmm. statement he made. He said, no man coming to the Father but by me. He closed the door on every religion, every philosophy, uh, every idea. He closed the door completely. Yes. 
Yes, <laughs> he closed the door completely, completely. with that statement. Mm -hmm. No man coming to the Father. That's right. Except by me. You know, it's an awesome time to think tonight. How long have you been broken? Mm -hmm. How long have you been making it on broken pieces? When tonight you could really be made whole, you could really come into the fullness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Amen. Christ. Experience the power of God's Holy Ghost. Walk in the divine nature of God. What an experience it would be if we now coming through the COVID-19, through the pandemic, to do all of these things and walking into the wholeness and mm -hmm. the fullness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, with that incomprehensible love of God, mm -hmm. it comes with divine protection. Mm -hmm. Divine protection refers to the blessings, provisions, protections given by God in every area of our life. Mm -hmm. The record suggests in Psalms 91, 10 through 11, no harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all of your ways. The proverbial writer picks it up in Proverbs 1 and 33, but whoever listens to me mm -hmm. will live in safety and be at ease without fear or harm. Nahum 1 and 7 says, the Lord is good, a refuge in a time of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. We must reflect on all that we've been through and yet we are safe in his arms. Mm -hmm. He is making us whole and complete in him. So, Apostle, what would you say to that person that, that will say, you know, I'm about to give up because I just can't get over this psychological, this mental dysfunctionality of my brokenness. I just can't get past this point. Mm -hmm. Well, here's what I would say. If you give up, where do you go at from there? There's Amen. no other. There's no other place to go. Amen. And if and 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 what you what you think you you're trying to escape, um, uh, uh, you're going into something worse than that. Mm -hmm. So why so so why give up? And you don't really have to give up, but you do have to hold on. Amen. <laughs> you understand <laughs> what I'm saying? But yeah. you, but to give up, uh, uh, to give up means that it, uh, it's over with. And, and, and that's exactly what you didn't want to begin with. See what I'm saying? And you don't have to give up. You know, the Bible says he saves to the uttermost. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you just have to just be still. Be still and know that he's God. He knows, he knows where you at. I like what Job said. Job was saying, he said, you know, I can't find him on my left. I can't find him on my right. He said, I go forward. I can't find him there. I go back up. I can't. He said, I ain't got to worry about all of that. I may not know where he's at, but he knows where I'm at. Yes. See, God knows, God knows where you're at and he knows what you got to do. And, and watch this here. And he's, and, 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 and he's on the way to fix it. But you just got to be just, you got to wait. David said, he said, I, he said, I had fainted unless I believed to see the goodness in the land of the living. And then, and then David said this, he said, here's my advice to you. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen our heart. Then he says it again. Wait on the Lord. So we, we got to wait on the Lord. And how are we going to wait, Bishop? Got to keep praising him. Got to keep magnifying him. Got to keep glorifying him. We got to serve him with joy and gladness no matter what's happening. Praise the name of the Lord, because he that shall come will come, and he will not tarry. See? And so, and, and he tells us that, uh, 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 again, it's back to the word. He gives us his word. And the Bible says it's impossible for him to lie. He watches over his word to perform it. Not one jot or tittle will fail in his word. So now we got it. We just got to wait. Wow. <laughs> you, you, you can't give up after hearing all of that. <laughs> you know, so after you reflect, the next thing you have to do real quickly is you have to refocus. Uh -huh. To refocus means to clear it up, to clear make it up. clear. 
John 3, 16, that whosoever believeth in him should not, could not, will not perish. Mm -hmm. It's impossible for you to perish if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He gives you divine provision. He gives you a purposeful life that is set apart, separated from the world, and complete in him. Complete means lacking nothing. That's right. That's the life that we live in the Spirit of God. But divine provision comes by faith. God knows your every need even before you tell him. And he promises to provide for every need. He is ready to make full provision for you. He wants you to be whole and complete. Mm -hmm. The question is, do you trust God? There you go. Because faith requires trust and trust requires obedience. The record of 1 Kings 17, 3 and 4 says, Elijah obeyed God immediately. Mm -hmm. He goes where God sends him. He does what God tells him to do. Obedience to God is essential at all times. All times. But in the time of lack, it could be a matter of survival. Mm -hmm. Elijah did not survive. He just waited for God to speak and then acted on it. Hearing God requires you to walk in faith and obedience. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I like what you said. It, it's, not, it's not complicated to serve God. The Bible says even a fool cannot err if he follows God. Watch this here. But um, he just simply says this here. All right, you don't know what to do. You know, you're in a situation where you don't know what to do. Well, then the Bible says, well, acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. It, sure. it says, uh, he shall, he shall, he shall direct that path. All you got to do is acknowledge him, uh, cast your care upon him, uh, bring it to him, and then he takes care of it from there. And, and, and watch this here. And he knows, watch this here, he knows what he's got to do. Yeah. See what I'm saying? And he knows what to do. And, and when he gets through doing it, it's going to be good. You, you're going to be, you're going to be all right. In fact, the promises is this here in Jesus. I came that you might have life and have more, uh, 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 it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. So that means that uh, you're not in abundant life if you die before time. You're not in abundant life if you're confused and unhappy. And yet Jesus said, I come to fix that. Amen. Apostle really released that word today. Psalms 84 and 11 the B portion, no good thing will I withhold from you mm -hmm. if you walk upright. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but you shall have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. You have to reassess where you are. You have to refocus and finish strong. Will you be made whole? Join us next week. We are the men of integrity. Praying for your miracle. Out of your bed, out of your, out of your.